How's it going everyone? It is Online here. Welcome back to another video course as always. Hope you guys had a good 4th of July if you guys celebrated it. And yeah, I guess with that being said, I wanted to talk more about PlayStation because they have been in the news lately, talking about pretty much their plan for PS5. More importantly, who the audience they're going to have in mind for buying PS5, as well as kind of just their overall plan. Now, yeah, I have multiple articles here that kind of all coincide together and just have a broader meaning on what PlayStation's trying to do. It's something that's not all too surprising, but something worth talking about nonetheless, because yeah, it does worth noting that we might actually get some studio acquisitions. At least Jim Ryan has said that Sony's interested in it. But yeah, I guess with that being said, let's get full into what Sony has been saying lately. I guess before we get into the studio acquisitions, I want to talk about PlayStation's audience for next gen. This comes from the Wall Street Journal. Sony's pretty much looking at Microsoft as their main competitor, as they should pretty much right now because yeah obviously the xbox is pretty much the closest thing that you have to a playstation nintendo switch has a completely different audience sure there is some blend in there but a lot of people that buy uh you know a switch it's a pretty different audience than what they want out of that device compared to what they want out of a ps4 completely obviously seeing microsoft as a main competitor that's kind of obvious but they see google as a potential threat which i think is pretty much exactly how the situation is right now because obviously google isn't going to be something that's like a big threat right now it's only going to be kind of like a big threat for sony you know once they actually are established with google stadia and 5g becomes more apparent and that might actually happen here in a couple years so they're looking at it as like a mid-year cycle kind of you know in the middle of the generation of ps5 of google going strong you know that stuff isn't really that surprising that's just going to be how it is right now more importantly they talked about you know in terms of the playstation 5 what they're doing for it how they're focusing on the graphic heavy games because that's what they believe people want out of a next-gen console and just their games in general which require a next-gen console and they said that they're pretty much targeting hardcore gamers that care about the little details in like a console and overall what they want out of a platform like that so overall do I find that very surprising not really given their success with the PS4 obviously you know they're focusing on games that makes complete sense when you talk about PS5 don't expect Sony to really talk about their services or you know ultimately having this as like a family box obviously we saw what happened you know with Xbox when they decided to do that and make it like a family console didn't really work out there and ultimately I believe if you really focus on making like the people in the know comfortable with this platform like hardcore gamers and people that are gonna buy this day one the casuals in some way they're gonna kind of get that because they're gonna ask around and try to figure out what's the best platform and you know people are gonna give obvious answers and stuff and really if you can give like the general consumers kind of like a sense that the ps5 is the best you know platform in terms of features that's gonna carry over to the casuals when they ask and stuff and overall like they tend to kind of follow if that makes sense like casuals make up a bunch of the audience but a lot of that is kind of based on what people buy earlier on you're not going to see casuals follow through what people aren't really buying in the beginning anyway so that makes complete sense you know they want to focus on the day one adopters and that's going to fully you know help them in the long run when casuals end up adopting too and yeah ultimately when they say that the price is going to be like you know respectable for what they're offering i'm kind of expecting 500 dollars. i mean obviously they're not going to do a big 600 like last time with the ps3 and you know with the ps4 was 400 but if they really want to push it which it sounds like they really do i'm expecting ps5 to be like 500 dollars, which i think is a it's a good trade-off not the best but it's a decent trade-off based on what they're saying that the specs wise this console will be in ultimately you know as us like if you're watching this video you probably care a lot about what the ps5 is going to be able to do yeah you're gonna probably pay that because you care about it honestly now talking about what jim ryan was talking about earlier he was talking pretty much to nikki i believe um and it was translation by Giamatsu. yeah they're pretty much talking to nikki i believe i'm saying that right i'm probably screwing that up um but they're pretty much talking about you know how content's ever you know more important than it is now especially with places like google stadia on the rise where you could play those games anywhere and stuff content's gonna really gonna remain king i mean you look at streaming platforms in terms of like tv shows and movies and stuff look at what netflix doing right now and look at you know disney plus is on the rise and how that's freaking them out how there's the whole kind of fiasco with them canceling their netflix shows in terms of like their marvel properties yeah content really remains king it's why you're going to be on a platform you know you go to certain you know streaming platforms not because of their specs and stuff like that you go there for the content and the stuff that you can actually watch at the end of the day so it kind of reigns true here with playstation in general and gaming consoles in general you buy consoles based on the kind of games you get out of them and that ultimately you know dictates you know what you buy so playstation obviously the reason why it's sold so much is because Generally, they have like the best exclusives to play. They have a lot of first party games that a lot of people want to play. And ultimately, you know, that's not the only factor, but that's ultimately why PlayStation has sold as many consoles as it is and why it's, you know, 
still selling well strongly here a couple years down the line, even when Xbox is improving their policies, they still don't have the games. That's still the main kind of bottleneck for them in a way, so yeah, focusing on that, obviously they want to create more content, and that's going to require more studios, and then, yeah, they talked about how they're openly, you know, looking at possibly acquiring studios. There was a recent rumor based on Push Square that they said they might be eyeing Remedy, which Shuhei actually did visit that studio. Um, you know, Shuhei is like the guy that looks over all the, you know, worldwide studios. He, you know, visits them frequently, so him visiting it, I could see how people take that apart, you know, and might see something into it. I'm not going to take that as, like, confirmation, obviously, that he might just be visiting because he's PlayStation and he wants to see the game and just overall see how the studio is doing. And, but there might be something more to it. He might actually be eyeing to, you know, Sony in general might be eyeing to bid on it if their rumors are correct. And I believe, you know, uh, Benji Sales also commented on it, which is a pretty credible guy on uh, Twitter. So there might be something to it. You know, I'm not really sure if that's going to be true or if that's ever going to come out, but... Yeah, that's a strong rumor. In fact, going over some studios right now, I kind of wrote down a list of possible studios they might acquire. I put Blue Point Games, which, you know, obviously do Shadow of the Colossus, a lot of ports and remasters like that. You know, they did Nathan Drake Collection, Gravity Rush 2, Insomniac Games obviously did Spider-Man. I feel like if Sony was to eye one developer, um, they definitely, like, the smart one would be Insomniac Games, but I believe Insomniac Games has denied them in the past, so I really don't see that you know, happening at all. I believe they want to remain independent, so, yeah, that's, like, more of, uh, what Sony would want, but not what Insomniac would want, so I doubt that's ever gonna come true. Remedy, as I just said, that one's probably the most likely one. Kojima Productions is entirely possible, although I feel like with the amount of praise and, you know, belief people have behind Kojima in general, he doesn't really need a backer like Sony at all, so I feel like he might just completely stay independent right now, <laughs> honestly. He doesn't need to, like, link with Sony, but, yeah, Kojima Productions still remains independent to this day. And Supermassive Games, who do kind of Until Dawn and a bunch of smaller VR projects, but I feel like if Sony was to buy them, they would already would have bought them. And that kind of leads to my next point, is that there's not really that many studios on the market. Like, you know, doing some research before this video, a lot of studios are pretty much bought up. Like, yeah, I was even considering Rocksteady, but that's, like, pretty much bought up by Warner Brothers, which, yeah. There's not really that many studios out there that are independent that kind of would be worthwhile for Sony to buy, which is why you kind of see Sony building up this new studio. You know, I've already talked about this a lot on the channel before, about this secret, you know, PlayStation studio that's in San Diego. We talked about Quentin Cobb being hired there and how it's possible they might be continuing and chartered over there in that studio while Naughty Dog can move on. That, to me, makes the most sense. Like, you could take talented leads from other studios or just talented people, which is why your games are so critically acclaimed, because of the talent behind these studios, and, you know, spreading your resources and maybe building up some new studios, which makes the most sense in my opinion, and it's what I believe Sony's doing in San Diego right now, and what they might be doing more going forward in general. You know, other people are saying Ready at Dawn, I really doubt they're going to buy Ready at Dawn. Ready at Dawn also does a lot of different stuff, and by the way, if they wanted to buy Ready at Dawn, we would have seen that Order 1886 sequel by now, or some other game with them, so that's definitely a no for me. And especially when they have so many different interests in VR, with Oculus and stuff, there's no way that's going to happen, honestly. So yeah, I'd say Remedy is probably the closest chance we get to any studio acquisition at all, because Remedy does have like similar interests in games, and you know the kind of audience that buy their games. Yeah, I mean, would I want to see that as a consumer? Not really, I like playing their games on PC as well and stuff, but, you know, ultimately as Sony, that's a smart decision, you know, exclusive sell. So yeah, in terms of studio acquisitions and first party and stuff, that's pretty much what my predictions are there. They did talk briefly about, you know, content in general, and how they might, you know, acquire, you know, exclusive rights, kind of like what they did with Crash Insane Trilogy, how they had like a year for that, similar to how Xbox had like a year for uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. That's probably going to remain true in, you know, early PS5 generation I wouldn't be surprised, Sony was easily the lead in this generation, they were probably going to have no issue, you know, locking contracts with certain developers. Yeah, I mean, we all kind of hate timed exclusives, you know, no one really likes them, there's really no point to them, I mean, there's no point to us if you own the platforms, um, but it does force people to actually buy certain platforms, which is kind of the whole intent behind it. Yeah, we're probably going to see that a lot next generation, Sony and Microsoft, probably more on Sony based on this article, honestly. Wouldn't be surprised if that's going to be some news that come out of, like, the initial PS5 reveal is, like, what at launch you might be able to get, you know, exclusive-wise. So, I'm looking at the big third-party publishers. I mean, not really the huge ones, but things like kind of like the Tomb Raiders or the Arkham. I wouldn't be surprised if they lock up with Rocksteady and have, like, an exclusive thing with that. It's not out of the realm of possibilities, so. 
Sony's next generation plans are sure interesting. They sure seem to be focusing on two things, hardcore gamers and content. And yeah, I mean, that's a good thing. Those are like the two strong seats on why they're succeeding right now. And doubling down on that next generation, making sure you have all the content that you want. Not to have as many gaps as you had this generation, especially when games are taking so long to develop nowadays. Yeah, development times have never been as long as they are today, and that sure is noticeable when you look at this generation and how many studios have only been able to crank out two games that they're lucky at the point right now. So, yeah, just the sure reality of the situation and kind of what we're thinking about right now in terms of PS5. In terms of when we hear more information, it seems like we're just getting article after article, so maybe that will continue. Um, but in terms of like official word from Sony, we'll have to wait until you hear if they have like a PSX this year because they do. Wouldn't be surprised if we hear about it there, but if not, early next, you know, Q1, maybe something like that, we'll hear about the PS5 officially and start getting that conversation bump rolling more faster, I guess. But in the meantime, of course, we still got Death Stranding for later this fall, a bunch of cool third-party games like that. Yeah, I guess that's been it for, you know, PlayStation right now. Kind of some interesting news to chew on while we wait for official word on them and Sony. Obviously, Sony's just coming off a of quiet E3. I say quiet because they, quite frankly, weren't at E3 at all, so... Yeah, make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Make sure to comment down below some of your thoughts on PlayStation strategy going forward. Hey, how about you list some studios down below that you think are possible that Sony might acquire? Hey, list some dream ones. I've seen people mention Bungie, which I think is batshit crazy, but hey, have that in the comments down below. I've been online, of course. As always, make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with all the content I produce here on the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to enjoy the rest of your day, and take care, everyone.